What's up guys, my name is Jared Kaufman. I'm a 21 year old carpenter here in South Denver in Colorado. Welcome back to part two, where we're gonna be building these exterior walls, getting the zip tape up, and plumbing and lining, getting ready for second floor and roof. Welcome back to part two of this house. We finished the floor in the last video, did the subfloor Advantech. Now we're all plated, we're all cut. You can see our headers and everything ready to roll. Now it's time to start wall framing and more importantly, wall sheathing and the weather barrier that's incorporated into the material with the zip system. So yeah, let's get into it. So, let me get my handy dandy nail box, nail shooter box. So yeah, obviously nothing is cut yet. So that's gonna be my trimmer, so I'll leave it over there. I can throw my hammer in the header so I can get it up flush. Start with the corner. And then I come back through with the trimmer. Yep, I literally just take my saw, cut it flush right where it's at. And it's relatively quick and, you know, it's obviously super tight because sometimes if your header might be, instead of nine and a quarter, it's nine and three eighths or nine and an eighth, it can mess with it. This is actually what I like about this method is it every single trimmer is custom to the header in the king stud. So everything is going to be perfect. And it takes like such a little brain power, which is right up my alley. So we're cutting blocks for our perimeter nailing on our sheathing. Um, and instead of pulling out a tape and taking a little extra time, uh, we like this method. We offset uh, the block an inch and a half. And with these saws, this side of the table is an inch and a half from the blade. This side is three and a half inches from the blade. So if we're offset here, we just run the table down the stud. And then it fits great. Um, so we're gonna do that along all of these in the stud bays for the for the sheets to nail into. All right. So this circumstance, you can see we have a corner here with the flat stud for backing for the wall that's gonna be dying into it on the other side. In this case, um, the builders were kind enough to bring us some insulation so we can put it in ahead of time. So we are gonna do that, and that is something that I can promise you probably 90, 98 or 99% of homes the carpenters don't do this on. Because Ty says 98.73, he asked Siri on his Android. Um, it's worth it, and it's a thing that sets you apart and makes you a higher quality builder. All right, so this wall is ready for sheets. So what we're gonna do now, we've got our line snapped, eight feet all the way across, but it's not eight feet from the bottom of the wall. It's eight feet from the bottom of the green plate down here. So the reason we do that is we'll put our eight foot sheet on top of this, right on that line. It's gonna come down to eight feet right here. So when we stand our wall up, this will rotate and put us right on that green plate. What that does is it, one, it ties us into the floor system completely. Now that's not necessary for code, but it makes a little bit higher quality product and it just leads to better tie-in, a little bit better shear values. It's not needed, but it is appreciated.
So, you can see this red snapped line here, and you can see that our tape stops right here. The reason for that is, I mentioned our plywood overhang, which lets us tie into the floor system. We only tape up to here because when we stand this up, we need to put more nails here. We're gonna stand it, we'll put our nails in it, and then we'll continue the tape from there. Technically, you can run this over the top and you're totally good to go. We still like to run everything underneath other things. It's not necessarily necessary. It's just good practice. All right, so now with this wall all framed up and squared and we do what I call 3D framing. If we have small bump outs and things like that, we'll just put it on to the wall basically as a member. Yeah. So we stand up and sit right where it belongs. But another thing we like to do if we're framing on a two-story building in this section of the house, we have a floor going above us, is I'll put my rim joist on top of the wall before we stand it. So our rim joist is an inch and a quarter thick, two by six, five and a half. So what I do, I rip the block to four and a quarter. So that way when I put the inch and a quarter piece right on top of it, see if I can't lift this without embarrassing myself. All right, so this wall is all framed up, ready to stand. We call this 3D framing. Basically, it's there's walls going perpendicular and horizontal to this. And basically, instead of framing three separate little walls, we just stacked them right on top of this. Just saves a little bit of time. But anyways, how we've got this rigged up, we've got two straps going through the window ROs on either side. We set those in the middle, and then we have those shackled onto this dual chain system here in the middle which we can then lift with the forklift so it gets us about 14 feet off center which should be enough to get this lifted relatively evenly so yeah let's boom it up All right, so now with most of our exterior walls up, we're gonna start a gable wall. Now this is a trust roof house, but we like to frame our gable walls all the way up to the top of the roof, as long as the engineering permits it. So I like to calculate all these through math. That's a different video, but uh, Tim Uller from Awesome Framers has some great content on that, as well as Matt Pinella, also known as Matt Bangs Wood. I have a couple horrible videos on rake walls if you wanna see them. But anyways, I'm calculating all of this stuff, getting it ready to roll. We'll get this all nailed up. All right, so this rake wall is actually asymmetrical. This side is about two inches shorter than that side in terms of where the rake terminates. So how we squared it, we pulled a symmetrical dimension from the center of our rake wall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook both sides 
I'll hook my corner here. Ethan has his corner marked. And then we will just confirm that we have the same dimension to the peak of the rake. So that's how we got this guy squared. All right, you can see here we've got two straps, one over the top of our subfascia and one over the front of our bottom plate, or our top plate, sorry. So the reason we do that is when we go to lift this wall with the forklift, it's naturally gonna wanna fold down on the sides. And since this wall is built up like this, as it folds down on the sides, it'll wanna open up like that. So we put this on there to keep it nice and tight up here, and then we don't have to go and patch it up later. I learned that one from Tim Uller, so thanks Tim for that. All right, so we're gonna stand this wall now. We've got it bolted in to the rake on either side. We kind of tried to split the difference as far as the distance. Shackled to the brackets and then shackled to the truss jib. Let's see how this balances out when we come up. Seems pretty good. Can I hold there? All right, so we're starting to work on these garage walls here. You'll notice in the back corner over there, they're a different plate height than the rest of the house. That's because this is gonna get a floor on top of it, second story walls, and then another roof on top of it. Most of this house is single story. There's one other small section of second story. So what we're doing is we're finishing our sill seal detail on the garage foundation all the way around the perimeter. And then we're basically nailing our studs to our top plates standing them up and toenailing those down to the green place. That way there's less opportunity for the air barrier to get broken and it just lets us get a cleaner detail with that. All right, so with our garage walls completely framed, the next thing we're gonna be working on is getting these sheathed and sheared. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull eight feet down from the top plates on this. We'll run our block line and a chalk line across there. We'll put our rip across the bottom of these walls. So that way after that's done, we can just put eight foot sheets vertically all the way around it. 